Hello, I'm crime fiction writer Brenda Chapman, and today I'm chatting with Karen Copeland, an Ottawa author. Uh, this is one of a series of interviews introducing some of the fine writers, crime fiction writers from Ottawa and Eastern Ontario. Uh, now, Karen Copeland is the author of the Ottawa Valley Mysteries, of which there are four, with a fifth soon to be released. So good morning, Karen. It's great to speak with you today. Good morning. It's nice to meet you. Um, before I talk about your books, I'm quite fascinated by your background, uh, noting that you have a Master's of Science degree in Animal Bioscience from the University of Guelph and a Doctorate in Medical Virology from the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Can you tell us a bit about your field of study and your career? Yes, I, after my PhD, I did a postdoc at McMaster University. And then I moved to Ottawa to start a lab there at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute, where the people in my lab studied um, host proteins that can assist HIV in its replication with um, um, efforts to identify possible therapeutics to treat HIV infection. Wow, interesting work and important work. And I also had a, a cross appointment with the University of Ottawa. So I taught in graduate virology, immunology and microbiology courses. So have you always loved crime fiction and, and what got you started writing in this genre? I began getting more interested in mysteries as a child when I read the Enid Blyton Secret Seven series. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I wanted to write the type of mysteries that I write is because sometimes when I've read books that have a bit of a science or medicine angle to them, I find that things are blown out of proportion and not realistic. So I wanted to write stories that were more realistic um, without using too much scientific or unnecessary scientific jargon so that the layperson could understand well. I also got started with Enid Blyton and Secret Seven, Famous Five. I love those books. Oh, the Famous Five too. Yeah, they were great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now the first book in your Ottawa Valley Mysteries is titled Publish or Perish, introducing protagonist Annie Watson. Annie is a scientist leading a research uh, team. So art is imitating life. How else would you say that Annie is alike uh, you or like you or uh, dissimilar to you? Uh, well, Annie's a virologist like me, mm -hmm. and when she started her first academic position as, as, um, as an independent scientist, she moved her mother with her, who was retired, and that's exactly like me, <laughs> but that's where the similarities end, because in the books, Annie, especially the first two books, Annie uh, gets into some trouble, and uh, she um, does things that I would never have done, like conducting secret experiments to expose fraud by another scientist, that type of thing. <laughs> and can you tell us a bit more about the premise of your series and what uh, subgenre of crime fiction it would fit into? Yes, um, <clears throat> Annie Watson first has contact with the police in the fictional community of Cairnsmore when she discovers an injured police dog on her lawn. Uh, then she, that's when she meets Detective Joe Gallagher, who is the senior detective. Um, later, she doesn't think she'll see him again, but uh, there's a murder at the research institute where she works. Um, the crimes in the first few books often involve either the research institute or the university that's nearby. Um, but I also take the detectives in these series to other locations, such as Quebec, um, um, uh, actually in Quebec, Montreal and, and rural Quebec, Toronto, and in my second book, uh, about half of the book is set in the Netherlands. What is the name of that book? Um, oh, the second book is Dead Ringer. Dead Ringer, okay. And as far as subgenre, it's um, not, not cozy, I don't think. It, it would be probably police procedural mixed with um, scientific thriller or medical thriller. So Karen's more in terms of what you said is fictional. Uh, can you describe the setting a little bit? Um, well, as I said before, it's, um, it's a small city, maybe uh, around 80,000 to 100,000 people in the Ottawa Valley near the Bonachere River 
and there's access by a rural highway to an old mill that sometimes figures prominently in the books. Um, there is the research institute and, um, and university. And I think I covered that about their involvement. And in the books, I mentioned other communities in the Ottawa Valley, just to give some context of Renfrew, Petawawa, or in Friar. And there's another fictional community called Cavendish in, in the books as well. So a fictional setting set within the real locale. Yeah. Ottawa Valley. Okay. Um, you also wrote a children's book called Katahari <laughs> uh, about an undercover cat. Can yes. you tell us about the storyline in, in Katahari and what age group this book would appeal to? Um, I think probably ages eight to 12. In the book, Katahari can talk. And um, also in, in this story, the ability to speak is, is an inherited trait. So not all animals can talk. Um, <clears throat> she's discovered by um, a government agent when he's standing in front of a fish store and he hears a voice say, that is one beautiful trout <laughs> and looks around and the cat's the only, <laughs> the only creature there. So he enlists her help because she's small and can get into small places and observe and understand and report back to him. In the story, she's sent into a research institute where there have been anonymous reports that, that uh, the animals have not been treated well. Yeah. And, and, and she's helped by the animals that she interacts with in the research institute, as well as there's this really smart alecky field mouse that calls her furball, and with the family dog, who is a really formidable German shepherd. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. It, it's, I, I enjoyed proofreading that book the most of all the books. <laughs> now, authors are often asked to give the one minute elevator pitch telling about their book. Could you please pitch your upcoming release? I hope you have a title that you can tell us for the Ottawa Valley Mysteries. Um, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> the book is called Fatal Euphoria and in it, a drug dealer um, is discovered, uh, actually, a, a, a drug dealer with ties to Quebec is found murdered in Cairnsmore. So this takes the detectives on an investigation that uh, where they're working with the Montreal drug unit. But shortly after that, an orthopedic surgeon in Cairnsmore goes missing. Mm -hmm. And then orthopedic patients start dying from their own medications. Uh -huh. And so the detectives have to work between Montreal and Cairnsmore to figure out what's going on. And as it turns out, the mysteries do have um, a connection, although tenuous. Oh, so great. So what, are, what else are you working on now? And uh, what are you planning for your next project? Um, right now, I'm, I'm working on a book about arson. Uh, so, so there's an arsonist loose in Cairns Moore, and it's sort of similar to the arsonist that was active in Vanier in Ottawa a few years ago. Yeah, I remember. Until there's a fire where an immunologist, a, a retired immunologist from the University of Toronto is killed. And that takes the investigation to Toronto and um, it's a very, it's a kind of a complicated story. And there's some people who are new to Karen's more who have really shady pasts and have done some really nasty things. So the detectives are able to close some cold cases that are not even in their region. And the kind of the fun part of the story for me is that I take it to the, the um, Honduran island of Rotan towards the end, because that's where the bad guys try to escape too. It's a, it was, that part was really fun. <laughs> yeah, sounds uh, really interesting. So um, I'm, I'm just going to close with a few snapper questions sure. to gain a bit more insight into the real Karen Copeland. Okay. <laughs> so where, where did you grow up, Karen? I was born in, in Trenton, Ontario, but my parents moved us to Toronto when I was nine, which was a lovely experience because I discovered the most beautiful library in the world on Young Street which no longer exists. It was um, huge and with long wooden tables and leather couches and chairs, just wonderful. Yeah. Do, do you have any hobbies besides writing? Well, I love to garden. Really a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love to garden. Mm -hmm. um, I like to walk. I like to do home repairs uh, that are at least um, 
within my skill set, and I love cooking. Oh, okay. Are you a plotter or a pantster? Um, I'm a plotter before I start the book, just you know, thinking what it's going to be about. But once I start writing, I'm pantser all the way. I often have no clue where the book is going at times, <laughs> and sometimes really surprise myself with how wonderful that turns out. <laughs> Yeah, I think you'd be surprised how many crime fiction writers are pantsters and just go. Ah, okay. um, how long does it take you to write the first draft of a manuscript? About about four months, I would say. But sometimes I I um, I work full time for four to six months out of the year. So during those times, it would take longer because I can only write on weekends. Yeah, that's a real juggling act. Uh, which crime fiction author or authors do you most admire? Um, uh, Elizabeth George and Carol O'Connell, and of course I love P.D. James books, yeah. and um, when, when I want something a little darker, I might go to Joe Nesbo or, or maybe the Department of Q Mysteries. Oh, okay. And what's something people might be surprised to learn about you? I have a strong in interest in World War II. My, um, my dad was a sergeant in the Signal Corps of the Canadian Army. And my mother, who was from Wales, um, she was a volunteer um, air raid marshal during the war, going up on ladders and getting incendiary devices off of roofs to prevent fires. But also my mother worked at several jobs. And one of them was as a server in a wealthy household in London. And she served people such as she always called her old Queen Mary, who was the wife of George, George V, and also in attendance of Winston Churchill. So I would like to write a series of books, or, or not books, of short stories based on the, what my mother and father had told me about the war and about uh, an aunt and uncle from Wales as well and their experiences during the war. I just have to learn how to write a short story because that, that's a bit of an art. <laughs> yeah, but that, that would be fascinating. That'd make for some fascinating reading. I, I hope I, I hope I get to that one day because uh, I would enjoy doing it. Yeah. So where where can people find out more about your books, Karen, or bought, or purchase them? More about you? Um, my books are published on Amazon, and they're also um, available at the Audio Library. And I'm just looking at my. Uh, my website. It's Karen Copeland's TA dot wordpress com. Okay, that's great. It's been lovely meeting you and speaking with you today and I wish you every success. Lovely meeting you too. And thank you for the community. Okay. Thank you.